Well, hello. It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks I've been using throughout the week. So, let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, what are your feelings on the upcoming Dune movie? Or is there something else coming up entertainment-wise you're excited about? This is going to be a, just a fun and depends on use instead of a serious topic. So let's dive into it. All right, so these are the pens I've been using throughout the week. Uh, from left to right, we have Senator Hoodie. Yeah. Twisby Draco. Caveco Sport. Aurora Style. Parker Sonnet. Schaefer Imperial Deluxe 2. Pelican 400 NN, which stands for Noi Noi. And finally, a Aurora 88. So let's see how they write. All right, so my first pen is Senator Hoodie. Uh, in communication with ODE, who I did a trade to get this pen. He, he got one of mine, I got two of his. I learned that this actually has a gold nib, so that's pretty fun. It's kind of a Parker 51 look-alike, but it's a piston filler. So since I don't know a model number, we're just going to go with Senator Hoodie. As a North Dakota resident, maybe it would like to uh, replace either Senator Hovind or uh, Senator Kramer. Whoops, that was political, but most of you probably have never heard of these people, so you don't care. Uh, the ink in it is Caveco. Summer Purple. This is an ink that was provided to me by ODE, who had, uh, you know, we did the pen trade, and he, uh, just out of the goodness of his heart, decided to send me some samples of Caveco ink, so I've been enjoying trying them out, and uh, I have to say this week I've been really enjoying this color. I mean, to the point that I am slightly tempted to buy it. I'm going to try to behave myself, but... Uh, Wow, is that a nice looking purple. So if I uh, break my uh, vow of not buying any more inks, we're going to blame ODE. My next pen also has a purple in it. This is the Twisby Draco. Uh, one of the few modern pens I bought this year. I'm not sorry either. It was expensive, but uh, I love this thing. So this is thanks to Talks from the Heart, who talked me into it, and uh, so glad she did. So Twisby Draco with a broad nib. The ink in it is Bungo Box. Sweet Potato Purple. Probably the most expensive ink I've ever bought. I forget who it was. Uh, maybe you can remind me. Somebody sent me a sample of this and I just like, oh, I want that. And then I uh, looked at the price and like, I still want it. And uh, in a weak moment, I bought it. Luckily, ink, uh, you know, when you, when you start thinking about miles of writing, versus a milliliters of ink, you realize that, okay, it may be an expensive ink, but still, I'm going to get a lot of writing out of it that'll ameliorate the, co the cost a bit. And I know sweet potatoes come in purple. I've just never seen one. I always think a sweet potato is an orange color. Okay, I'm for hiking, this is my little buddy. It's a Caveco Sport. Not, you know, the most amazing pen, but uh, you 
know, f when you use it for the purpose for which it was actually designed, it's actually kind of a nice pen. Uh, the ink in it is Caveco, also from a ODE, by the way, Pearl Black. So I'm honestly not very familiar with the Caveco inks. I've used, uh, was it Palm Green before? That's pretty much it. So uh, it's been interesting just trying out, so far, two samples. Uh, I'll be trying out the rest, don't worry. And, and that's kind of the fun of samples, is you get to try an ink, but you're not committed to like, oh, I've got a whole bottle that'll be with me for years and years and years. And you've got three to five milliliters, and you're just like, I can do this. My next pen is a uh, Aurora Style, which I think is a very attractive design. I couldn't tell you why, I just like it. So the Aurora Style, oops, S-T-Y-L-E, has a nice broad Aurora steel nib on it. And the ink in it is a Roshizuku. Murasaki. Shikabu. Named after a lady poet from Japan. And uh, one of my low-hanging fruit as I uh, try to shrink my ink collection because it's just a little 15 milliliter bottle. I just think to myself, you can use that up somehow. So uh, I'm trying, but I also want to use up, you know, just enjoy the inks I actually enjoy. So, uh, you know, someday I'll get that ink collection down to a reasonable size, but in the meantime, also have to use these samples and these really fun inks. I did a video this week, which you won't see for a few weeks, but it's coming, where I compared the Parker Sonnet to the Parker uh, Frontier. Parker Sonnet is several times more expensive, and I just like, well, what really is the difference? This is a Parker Sonnet I picked up in Fargo many years ago at Zanbro's has a medium nib in it. Off, more often on this channel you'll see it with an oblique nib in it, but uh, for the purposes of the video I put a medium nib in it and I haven't changed it yet. The ink in it is Krishna, another sample I was sent. Krishna Orange Blossom. Which is kind of a fun uh, Iron Gall ink. We'll just write it right over top of uh, the bleed through from last week's pens in use. But part of the fun of being Iron Gall is it changes color as it sits there on the page. And of course the sauna is just a great design. I had talked to myself into selling the sauna and uh, then I inked it up for that video and I'm just like, Ah, uh, no, but I actually like it. So this is my Schaefer Imperial Deluxe 2 with a fun conical shaped Triumph nib. Oh, uh, just nice little piece of the 70s come to life in my house. So Schaefer Imperial, oops, Deluxe 2. It has a fine nib, and the ink in it is the interesting brand Califolio Aurora. So, uh, 
Aurora Ink, is, or sorry, Califolio Inks are uh, a French brand, and they are supposed to be vintage friendly. So it's a way to get some interesting colors into your vintage pens, where you're worried about the uh, sacks getting attacked, or difficulty cleaning, or you know whatever you're worried about with your vintage pens. You know, some people worry that ink is too alkaline, it'll break down a latex sack. So, Califolio is supposed to be pretty safe. And, uh, you know, I almost inked up my Pelican M1000 this week, but this baby was calling my name. So this is the Pelican M4, sorry, Pelican 400NN, which stands for Noi Noi. For the 1950s, but who cares? Uh, has an extra fine nib. Uh, the ink in it is a sample that was sent to me several years ago and I kind of forgot about it because they sent me a wealth of Krishna inks and I kind of forgot this was in there. But they also included some uh, Elixir inks, which apparently is a local brand. This one is called... Uh, River Safari. So just kind of a fun green. And of course the uh, this version of the Pelican is a, has a kind of a fun nib. It's very flexible. And just lays down a great line. And, and the pen just feels just feels good. I like I like that little writing sample and then finally because it still has a lot of ink in it because this pen holds a crazy amount of ink is my vintage you know, probably from the late 1940s early 1950s Aurora 88 and unlike my other one this one is not all faded and stuff so this is the Aurora 88 And the ink in it is Aurora Black. Which I have discovered on, in these notebooks is uh, sort of on the bleedy side, although apparently not on this page. Actually, you should see the notes I was taken on legal paper. Uh, last night I was on a Zoom call and... Uh, Trying to use a fountain pen, I, I had just uh, inked up a Geha for a first impression, and uh, oh my god, it was awful. I had the ink was just bleeding through the paper. But this is looking pretty good. Okay, so I put a fun link down below, a um, fun bunch of links actually, because. Uh, the movie Dune was supposed to be released last year, but thanks to the whole COVID pandemic thing, it was delayed. And uh, it is going to come out in October this year, unless, you know, the Delta variant delays that further. But I'm really excited about it. Uh, the second trailer has been released. I will admit I preferred the first trailer, but the second trailer adds some interesting little moments, and I, I thought it was fun. So uh, I put a link to it down below. And apparently in some markets, they've also released footage from the movie. Uh, I, I'm going to put a link down there to Stephanie Michelle's video. Uh, she was one of the ones who was lucky enough to get to see some of that footage from the movie. And uh, she is excited. And uh, I'm excited too. I just haven't seen anything other than the trailers. And uh, I'm hoping for the best. I... Uh, I may even venture into a crowd in a movie theater just to see this. I don't know, but I'm very tempted that way. Sorry to say. Um, of course, we have uh, Quinn, who, who's been a big proponent of this movie. 
uh, talking about the trailer, and he, he did an hour and a half video <laughs> on his experience, just like Stephanie Michelle, to see the couple of minutes that they were willing to share. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, one thing I did notice is, uh, sorry, looking out the window. Uh, one thing I did notice, they, uh, well, Quinn anyway found himself under attack by Warner Brothers, the studio that's releasing the movie. Now, yeah, he is using a little bit of their footage, some of their pictures, but, uh, Here's a fanboy doing free publicity for Warner Brothers, and uh, Warner Brothers doesn't seem to be really having it, so I'm uh, not sure what that means, but, uh, you know, I, I did see he had some reason to be upset. But uh, at the same time, you know, you got to protect copyright, and, you know, where's that happy medium, and uh, I don't think Warner Brothers has found it. So, uh... That, that was kind of an interesting little controversy to go with it. But, uh, um, <clears throat> I guess I'll tell you how excited I am about the Dune movies. We've got Dune Messiah here. We've got Children of Dune here. Oh, look! <laughs> Dune the graphic novel, which I have not read yet. Chapter House of Doom. <laughs> Heretics of Doom. God, Emperor of Doom. Doom Messiah. Did we see that one already? I feel like we did. I know we saw another copy of this one already. Children of Doom. Keep me away from used bookstores. And of course, Dune. Dune. <laughs> and. Oh, it's in a slipcover. Sorry about that. Dune. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, this, this latest edition, some of you may know, but uh, has some nice artwork in it of uh, Paul getting tortured by the Gam Jabbar and all that business. But uh, this ornithopter, sandstorm, shirtless guy, who is he? I don't know if that's Paul or not, but anyway, who cares? Paul's like 15 when the book starts, so he probably doesn't look like that. Sandworm. You know, lots of pictures in this version of the book. So do I own too many copies of Dune? Oh, heck yeah. But I am really excited about this movie. I, I've seen the 1984 David Lynch movie, and it's... Okay, it, 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 it's easier to watch since I've read the book, but... Wow. <laughs> Not such a great movie. Uh, I, I've watched the uh, sci-fi series miniseries. It, it was very stagey. Uh, they, they were working with a very limited s special effects budget. So, you know, once I could accept that, I, you know, it worked. Um, Ian McNeese made a very good uh, Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. But, uh, you know... <laughs> Um, Paul, I guess the thing I'm most excited about with the movies is Paul, in the books, is 15 years old. Now, okay, how do you get a 15-year-old and then have him leading a revolution? You know, the book is a little ambiguous about time, so I'm not sure how much time passes before he's leading a revolution, but... You know, what 15-year-old can I picture leading a revolution? I can't picture any of them, so... I teach them, so, you know. Um, but uh, I can picture a 15-year-old growing up to be a leader. I think that's what happens in Dune, the novel. So, 
I think with uh, Tim Timothée Chalamet, they found a good actor who's kind of ambiguous. You know, he is. I think he's in his twenties, but he, he, you know, he looks young, and yet he's older, so he has some of the acting talent. So uh, I think he'll be a good Paul. Uh, I I will be eager to see the sequel when when they release that if they release it you know it's going to depend on how this one does but uh yeah i i am excited to see it so uh october i may be risking uh death in a theater just to go watch this movie so we'll see um I think Dune is a very difficult book to film. There is a lot of philosophy, a lot running beneath the surface that people don't see. Like, at first blush, you look at Paul on the cover of this Dune novel, and you think, Paul is the hero. He, and he's actually not. Paul... I won't go so far as to call him the villain, but Paul's big thing is he wants to survive. His mother wants him to survive. And together they manipulate the Fremen in order to survive, and the whole thing gets away from them. And since that wasn't totally clear in the first novel, that's why Frank Herbert created Doom Messiah. Because what happens as a result of Paul and his mother saving themselves is a rather horrific jihad, uh, a lot of death and destruction, and then Paul's kid turns out to be kind of an asshole trying to save humanity. So, uh, yeah, uh, there, there's a lot more there. And I am very curious to see which direction the movie takes it. Uh, I know the 1984 David Lynch movie took it to the direction of rain. And if you've ever seen uh, Jodorowsky's Dune, th that's a documentary because the movie was never made, but a director named Jodorowsky planned to make a Dune movie back in the 70s, and he had all sorts of great plans, engaged all sorts of amazing talent, did all sorts of you know, prep work, and the theater pulled the plug on it, and I think with good reason, but, uh, you know, he had this whole idea of Paul as a savior. And uh, when you read the books, Paul is no savior. Paul is as much of a vic, as much as a, okay, sorry, verbs are messing me up here. As much of a victim as anybody else just because he's trying to save himself. And uh, horror ensues because of that. So what do you do with that? Well, I, I'm pretty sure that the movie is not going to head that direction at all, but uh, I still wish them luck because this is a very, very deep novel. And if, if, they were to continue making movies about the different books. There is quite a story to be told here. And honestly, a lot of people don't read anymore. So uh, I think it would be valuable to have that story told. So I'm excited. And uh, like I said, Stephanie Michelle did a 20 minutes on that. I've only managed 11. <laughs> I, I got so excited I turned off the camera. I, at, at the time I picked this up, I had only managed about 11 minutes of enthusiasm, but uh, still, I didn't get to see the footage, and she did. So, uh, I guess I would ask you, are you, are you excited about anything coming out, fiction-wise, movie, book, or otherwise, this fall? Uh, I know Dune is one I'm excited about. Let us know down in the comments. So, I want to thank you for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.